Okay, so all parts are unwrapped. Now I am ready to lay it out properly. So if I go back into my check view, I can see U1, V1 is right here. So I want to try and shrink it all down. So if I just want a uh, holistic approach, I'll just select everything. Uh, from then what I can do is if I go to modify and layout, and it will put it all in there for me. So you can see it's created various shapes and sizes here, uh, different scales. It's also just a little bit over here onto this particular section. So if I shrink that down slightly, it'll disappear. Okay, so if I map that out now, alongside of my particular model here, what I'll be able to see is how it looks. How does the scale look? So for example, does this here look the same size as that? So when I put a texture on here, how will it all look? So I can see that this particular bit just here, now UV shell tool is a bit like object mode, but in the UV. So if I go there, that's quite small, but the scale is looking okay. The thing that's a little bit worrying is this, because it's not really showing squares, it's instead showing those rectangles. So if I edit it, you can see what it's doing. So I can start to manipulate it to look like what I would like it to. So I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. Okay, I've unwrapped it and think I've got my scale correct. Now, we're all good to go now and take this into Photoshop except for one thing. Because of my shade of view, I can see that this is showing me red. That means that I'm not seeing the correct side. Instead, it's upside down. So I can select that. Now I want to be able to see the UV toolkit. It pops up randomly, but if you can't see it, we can go tools. If we go hide and then show again, it will pop up and this will give us our different options. So in UV shell, I'm going to select that. I'm going to go back to my UV toolkit, which is just here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is to go to the transform options and I'm going to flip it. And now it's blue. Now the other thing that we might do, so let's say this was an object where the seams were really important. And what I mean by seams being important is if I turn that off and we go into this, this view, you'll be able to see these thick white lines. The thick white lines are the seams where we have cut and unfolded it. So if, for example, it was a table, if this was going to be a wood grain and I wanted the wood grain where my mouse is to continue nicely down to here, it wouldn't be the case at the moment because there's a seam there. So I would go into here and I would make sure that that particular part matched up over here. So then in Photoshop, my job was a bit easier. So I'd find that edge that links them together and what I could do then is I could actually stitch them together. So not in the transform tools. Instead, I would, it would be in the cut and sew. And if I press stitch together, that will stitch those two edges together. If I press sew, what it will do is it will create the link between the two. In some situations, we do that. In this one where I'm just going to have a basic matte color, it's not too much of an issue. So that's all ready for me to put into Photoshop. To do that, I make sure I have the object selected. I click UV Snapshot and it should link me straight to wherever my project is set. This one's not, although my project is correctly set. So I'll just go over here and go to Images. It's going to save in here as Battery UV. Save. I want it a nice bold color, PNG, and I want it to be about 1024 by 1024. We want to make sure those are the same number. It is a square image. Uh, and I'm just going to apply and close. If you get an error, then that means that that object is not selected correctly. And we just need to go object mode and select it. So if I browse now to my correct project, which was battery images. I can open this by right clicking and going open with Photoshop or open it in the editor that you want. And that's where we'll pick it up next lesson.